we're jumping into one of the more fun parts of making music on the computer, and that's recording audio in. We're going to just cover the audio recording basics in Traction Waveform. You can do this in Waveform Free or Pro. So what you need to start with is creating a project. We covered that in the previous video. And you're also going to need to have your audio interface set up, which was the first video in this series. So you can go back to that if you need to, but we're going to go back there right now anyway, because we just want to go to settings, audio devices, and we should already have this set up for ASIO. Plus you should have your device set up there. But what we want to look at is our audio buffer size. So ideally you want this to be the smallest size that's available to you, but not all interfaces and computers will be able to handle the smallest size. So you, you might want to play around with this typically between eight and 64 is usable, but try out your computer and see what works best for you. You'll know when it's not working because you'll hear pops and clicks and maybe even the recording will stop or stutters, all kinds of weirdness will happen when it's not working. So I have mine set up there and then we'll go back to our project here and we'll need a track to record onto. I've already named these tracks from the previous videos, but what I like to do it before I start recording is to name the track because the name of the track actually gets put onto the file. So if you're looking in the folder for this recording, you'll see that it's named base in this example. That's what we're going to be recording right now or whatever you decide to name it. And it makes it easier for you to go back and find those files. Plus you'll see them in the timeline as well. You can see the names in there and sometimes that can make things easier. So I do recommend renaming the track, just right click, rename track, put whatever you want in there, hit enter and it's renamed. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have the BPM set for whatever it is you're recording and you'll have to play around and test out whatever the BPM is for your song. So to set that, once you're ready, you can just click there and then type it in on your computer keyboard. And I want 170 for this one. And another thing that we'll want to do is enable our metronome. So you can see this click here. If you have this bottom properties minimized like this, then your click will be this little icon here and you click on that to enable it. You can see it's white when it's enabled and it's grayed out when it's disabled. Now, one thing you might want to do to take this even further is right click on that. And you can see there's some options in here. I like to have a one bar count in before it starts recording. That means it's going to tick for four beats and then it's going to start recording. And that just gives you a little bit of time to hit record and get ready to record. So I do like that. And some other things you'll notice in here is you can have it so it clicks during playback, which you may want for when you're trying to find your BPM. Or if you turn that off, then it will only click when you're recording. And you might like that because you might not want to hear that click when you're playing back, only when you're recording. You can change the click sound and you can even change the click output device, which could be handy if you're recording a drummer or something and he's monitoring through a different device or you have a different monitoring setup, something like that. You can change the click volume as well in here. So there's some options. The one that I do really recommend is that one bar count in. It does make things a lot easier. Then what we need to do is go over to the track that we plan on recording into and we need to set the input. Now this by default, it goes to input one, which is what I'm recording to. If you were recording to a different input on your computer, you would select whatever one, but I am using one. And then we want to arm it for recording. There it is. And I should be able to hear my bass guitar when I play it. And I can, if you can't hear it, just open up your bottom properties bar there. You want to make sure you're clicked on this here. So it's highlighted. And then down in this section, you can see input monitoring mode. And by default, I think it's set to auto. So you should be able to hear it. But if for some reason you can't, you can just put it on on and then you can hear it. 
there you go. So I'll leave that on. What I'm going to do is just click at the start of our recording here, make sure I'm on bar one. It's going to do a count in for one bar. So you'll hear the ticks four times, and then I'm not going to actually start recording until it hits here. That's because there's an initial attack when you start recording that could come before where the cursor is. So if I started here, that means the recording starts right there and I might miss some of my initial attack. So I'm going to start it here and I'm just going to hit record down here. Again, if this was minimized, you would hit the record button right there and we will hear our ticking. Right. And then to stop your recording, you can hit the space bar on your computer keyboard, or you can just hit the record button again, and it's going to stop it. And now we have our audio clip in here that we just recorded. Looks great. What you might want to do and a good practice to get into is saving often because you never know what's going to happen. You can add a poorly programmed plugin in here and it could crash everything. So I just always hit control S on my computer keyboard to save it after I do pretty much anything. So we're saved now, we've recorded that. Now, what if we wanted to record another track in here? Well, I'm going to swap this out for another guitar and we will find out. All right, I've got my guitar now. So what I'll do is I'll go to the track that I've named Git One for guitar one. And again, by default, it goes to your input one when we click on here. So I'm good to go. You can hear my guitar there. Not a whole lot going on. So I might actually go over here, click on this plus sign, and then I'm going to go to waveform because I'm just gonna use an effect that comes with waveform. And waveform free doesn't come with like an amp sim. So I'm just gonna add a distortion on here. It's not gonna sound the greatest. Later on in this series, we are going to get into adding plugins where we will add an amp sim. But for now, while I'm recording, because you're not actually recording the sound of this effect, you're just recording the raw guitar, but we're going to hear this effect. So just gonna increase that a little. That's all right there. And now I'm going to turn that down. Okay, turn this down a bit. Okay, we're good here. Now, before I record my guitar, because you can see it's coming in really hot, so I need to adjust the levels. And I'm not talking about the levels over here with our volume in the program, I'm talking about the levels on your audio interface. So you want to adjust the level on your interface. I'll just do that quick. A little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. All right, and then we can adjust the level here just to however we like to listen to it. Because again, all of the stuff over here isn't getting recorded to the audio file. This is just what we're hearing in here, but it's not what it's actually recording. So adjusting this level here isn't adjusting the actual level of your recording. So let's start this recording. Click over here. Now we have 
two clips recorded in here. Again, I'm going to hit control S on my computer keyboard to save this. And that's our audio recording basics right there. So now we might want to add some virtual instruments like drums. I'm not a drummer, so I always add a virtual instrument drums, which means we have to get into using MIDI and virtual instruments, which is what we're going to look at in the next video. You can check that out by clicking the video on the screen here. And if you liked this video that you just watched, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel to continue on with this course and get more audio tech tips for audio tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump. Thumbs up.